what about those uh, industrial complaints about Britain's youngsters lacking basic skills and the 50,000 pupils who failed to achieve any passes at all? Well, joining me in the studio is Brian J. Ford, former director of Mensa, who reckons that all children would benefit from more inspirational teaching. Uh, Brian, of course, the exam that we now know as the GCSE uh, descended from the Cambridge Board exam in the 1850s. Right. Mm. In those days, the questions really were pretty formidable, weren't they, by well, comparison? They were. I mean, here's the original 1858 paper. Geography. Draw a map of Great Britain and mark on the principal river basins. Draw an outline map of Hindustan. Uh, draw an outline map of Europe and trace upon it the dotted line of its watershed. I can't draw Europe without copying it from a map, and I don't suppose you can either, Lawrence. But there were also more interesting questions, weren't there? Some of them, when you read the modern papers, I mean, this is this year's uh, uh, Southern Examining Board paper, they're very terse, they're very bossy, they're very detached, but there's a sense of fun and uh, an enjoyment of intellectualising. In this early paper, for example, explain as you would to a child the cause of day and night. Can you assign a reason for supposing A, that the Earth moves on its axis, and B, that it's not stationary in the heavens? Now, that's the kind of question, particularly in this space age, that youngsters would love to tackle today. So what you're really saying is, because questions have become more boring, that there's no sort of challenge in learning anymore? There isn't. When kids go to the infant school, they usually adore it. They're very happy to go to primary school. But these modern, massive, bureaucratized comprehensives bore children to death. There's a huge rate of truancy. Kids don't like going to school. If you were giving them questions on how you organize a pop concert, classes on how you become a stand-up comedian, uh, courses on how you insure your flat, how you choose a home, how you raise a family, all these things, kids would be busting their nuts to get to school. If I ran schools, the first item on today's curriculum would have been analyzing the new Oasis album things that kids want to know about and would be excited to have a teacher explain. And would that mean that we wouldn't see 50,000 50, children getting nothing at all? I find that terrifying. The real thing that bothers me is that they've now low, lowered standards so much so that everybody gets a piece of paper that I can't see how kids don't. In the 1989 science paper, they had a drawing of a tripod, a drawing of a Bunsen burner, and a drawing of a flask. And the question was write the name out of each of these bits of apparatus. Wow. <laughs> you don't have to go to school to know things like that. So why has this sort of dumbing down come about? Because people want to be able to say, our school has got an increased number of passes from last year. Governments want to be able to say, more people than ever have got higher grades than ever. The only way that they've done that is to lower the standards. What I'd like to see would be the standards kept but kids excited by the principle of learning so that they actually gained more knowledge. But there is a glimmer of light, isn't there, briefly, Brian, because people are now talking about replacing the uh, A-levels with a baccalaureate. It's going to be a much broader and, and hopefully more stimulating sort of exam. Yes, but only if it really is. After all, we renamed all the polytechnics universities, but we didn't really change what goes on there. There is a danger in feeling that if you rename a problem, the problem goes away. What I'm saying is that we have to grasp the problem and solve it first. Right. I hope you get your school soon. Thank you very much for joining us.